Okay, I think we should teach our, all of our kids that food tastes better when we're hungry and that hunger is a good thing not to be feared. We just don't want too much, right? Like, like everything, too much or too little, even of a good thing, can end up being a bad thing, right? Hey friends, you're listening to the Healthy Parenting Handbook. It's just the thing we all said we needed when we first became parents. I cannot tell you how often I said or thought or felt, where's the handbook for this, right? Our little children, our toddlers, our teens, they don't come with a handbook. But now you've got a pretty good substitute. I'm your host, Katie Kimball from Kids Cook Real Food. And in every episode, I bring together experts in the fields of health, parenting, nutrition, and more to help you, parents who really desire to raise healthy, independent, capable adults, get the information you need. Friends, parenting is the toughest and the most rewarding job in the world. Thank you for joining me here as we talk about summer snacks. I'm the guest today. This is a solo episode with me, Katie Kimball. And most of this was recorded a couple years ago. So my kids were a bit younger, but you know what? Kids don't change that much. They, they change as they grow, but in general, they keep filling those same roles. And in the summer, in the summer, as a mom of four, every summer, I know what it's like. The younger the kids, the more serious this is. It's the snacks question. You see memes about this coming out in April and in May and in June as as summer even starts to get close. Oh, it's the 5,722nd time today my children have asked for snacks, right? Or I made this cute snack basket and it's day one of summer break and it's empty, right? And I know in my family, the kids are going to be like, mom, can I have a snack? Is a cookie a snack? Mom, can I have a snack? This is fruit, right? Mom, can I have a snack? Can I have a bar? Can I have a meat stick? Um, mom, does candy count for a snack? Ah, right? It is, it is enough to make us want to quit our jobs, but that's not an option. We do need to feed the children three to five times a day. We do need to get through summer. Um, and it's going to be lovely. I love summer, right? Sunshine, outside, swimming, trips, all that stuff. But man, sometimes the snacking can be such a sticky situation, right? And so today I have five tips. I have five tips to solve the snacking dilemma, to reduce the number of parental head explosions, um, and to just help everyone know what's going on and know what's expected. Because if expectations are laid out, parents and kids both are going to be happier all summer long. Okay, so five tips. First, make a system. All right, everyone will be happier if the kids know and the parents know when snacking is allowed to happen. So in our house, for example, snacking is between 9.30 and 10.30. It's between three and four. Those are the windows. Does every child have to eat two snacks a day? No. I mean, I've got a teenager. He just, he tends to eat later at night. I've got a nine-year-old who sometimes is hungry, sometimes is not. Sometimes we have a big breakfast. Sometimes we have a little breakfast, right? But if you're going to have a snack, it's in those two hours. And my husband got so tired of our little guy, Gabe, probably last summer, maybe the year before. And and Gabe just loves food. And unfortunately, when he's bored, he tends to think of food or screens. I'm really, really working on this. When he he asks when he's bored, I'll say you have to do two things before you can eat because I don't want him to learn to boredom eat. That's another story. Anyway, he he asked for snack far too long. He just sidled into the office. My husband's desk is closer to the door. So he took the brunt of it. Is it snack time? Is it snack time? Is it snack time? Right? He can't. He doesn't know how to tell time. So my husband taught our Google Home to announce when snack time begins. And he did it in a funny way. I think in the morning she said, she says something like, um, it's snack time all up in the Kimball house, yeah. Which if you can imagine like the Google voice very straightly saying that, it's kind of silly. Um, It's goofy. And in the afternoon, she uses that phrase from the book with no pictures, Badoongi face. Like it's snack time, everyone, Badoongi face. And so... The, the kids at least have that touch point, right? They don't have to eat, but at least they know when the snack time's allowed to happen. And it's easier as a parent to just say, no, it's not snack time yet. Yes, it is snack time now, right? There's defined boundaries. So that's number one is make a system of some sort. If that includes a system with what snacks are available in your kitchen too, cool. But at the very least, make a time box system. Tip number two is to watch for sugar. And I, I just discovered yesterday that this might be totally controversial. There's a really wildly popular dietitian on Instagram who talked about not 
saying to our kids that they should avoid sugar or that they should cut it down or that they should eat less sugar because that's like I'm look at me I'm like thinking so hard because it's it's a little foreign to me because that is like imposing diet culture on our kids and I'm like huh I'm not sure if I'm on board like I'm totally on board with not wanting our kids to diet I don't want our kids to worry about their weight right I don't want anyone to become an orthorexic and worry about every bite but 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 goodness gracious don't we have to be able to teach our kids that like some foods will serve them well and nourish their bodies and give them fuel and some foods are not going to serve them that well. Super fun, right? I always say, yeah, like that, those sweet treats are like, they're fun in our mouth. They're fun to share, but then they don't really do anything for us after that, right? They've lost, they've lost their purpose. So I think this is as a mom without any sort of medical degree, we're just moms, two moms talking over the fence. I think that step number two is to watch for sugar, okay? I, I want my kids to have lots of energy, to want to be able to be able to jump on their trampoline and go swimming and run and play with their friends and, and have fun. I want them to be kids in the summer. And in order to have energy, I know that they need a balanced snack, right? So I teach them that, you know, certain things are sweet treats or desserts and certain things are good snacks. I think that's really important. I would love to hear. If, if you feel like the, the diet culture is an ingredient in like that question, are we teaching our kids diet culture just by saying, no, you probably shouldn't have like pure sugar for snack. Um, now you all know, you all know my dessert policy. They can eat one dessert a day whenever they want. So if my little guy wants that at 10 in the morning, he can't have it. But <laughs> now in the afternoon, now he can't have another dessert. It's just the way, it's just the way we budget, the way we budget our sweets. So I don't know if that's right or wrong. I hope it's serving my kids. So far, they don't seem to be like super binging. And I do have a teenager with a driver's license and his own money. Um, he tells me he's too cheap to buy his own food, by the way. So that's good for me. So if you if you want your child to eat what you buy and eat what you choose, raise a cheap kid. This is what I've learned <laughs> in the last week as my teenager and I talked about food. Um, so So I think number two is watch for sugar. My, my rule is if it's in the first couple ingredients, that's a sweet treat. That's too much sugar, right? Um, if it's not, you know, if there's just a little sugar like sun chips, my, my little guy Gabe, he's six. He got sun chips for a baseball snack yesterday. And he just assumed because it was a baseball treat that it would be a dessert. It's like, oh, I wish I hadn't eaten my dessert. And I said, well, I don't think sun chips are dessert. I'm like, I, I know I did read that there's like a couple kinds of sugar in there, actually multiple kinds of sugar in sun chips. I said, but it's not like, not that much. It's not a, it's not actually a sweet treat. It's just a, just a treat, just a snack. So he had his sun chips with his dinner. I said, I'd like you to wait to open them until dinner starts so that you don't just eat them all before dinner. And he had them with his dinner and he ate a great dinner and he asked for seconds on salad and it all went fine. Um, so number one, have a system, create some time boxes so everyone knows what to expect. Number two, watch for sugar. I'm a believer. Curious to hear if you are too, that we do need to teach our kids that sugar doesn't serve us as well as other foods. Number three is to think of the word satisfying. Teach your kids the word satisfying. We want our kids to understand that the purpose of snack is to curb your hunger, not to fill you up. And we do want a satisfying snack, one that'll, you know, stick to your ribs, to use the old fashioned phrase, until the next meal, right? And so, and so we want to, we want to choose just that right balance. If a kid eats, you know, a handful of grapes, or a popsicle, or some fruit snacks, that's just sugar. It's just carbohydrates, right? There's really no fat or protein to slow down. And so they're probably going to be hungry in half an hour. They're, they're going to be too hungry before the meal, asking for more snacks, maybe getting a little emotionally unstable, getting a little hangry, right? Now, if a kid eats like a massive snack, right? A big trail mix with nuts and dried fruit and some cheese and crackers, and they have that popsicle, well, goodness gracious, they might not even have a chance to build an appetite before dinner. Does that make sense? So we got we to gotta find the balance. And I think that's, that's very important. I think it's not that hard. And kids can figure it out for themselves. Did you know my oldest son, Paul, and four of his friends wrote a cookbook for kids a couple years ago? It is the first and so far the only real food cookbook written by kids for kids. And I have to give Chef Junior a huge shout out as today's podcast sponsor. This book is packed with a hundred recipes that kids can make and they're leveled from beginner to advanced. So your littlest kids and your teens can find 
so many delicious foods to love. Again, this is written by five kids. They put together this cookbook when they themselves were between the ages of nine and 12, and it launched in 2020 when they were between the ages of 12 and 15. It is so inspiring for other kids to see what children do in the kitchen and what they have put together and to read words written by actual peers of their own. You can learn more about the book Chef Junior and how our kids put it together and also get some special bonus gifts just from our kid authors. Go to kidscookrealfood.com slash chef jr. That's kidscookrealfood.com slash c-h-e-f-j-r for all the fun bonuses, background scoop, and ordering information. Okay, I think we should teach all of our kids that food tastes better when we're hungry and that hunger is a good thing not to be feared. We just don't want too much, right? Like like everything, too much or too little, even of a good thing, can end up being a bad thing, right? So if you can get just the right amount of appetite before the meal, all your food tastes better. That should motivate kids to try to help figure out their own balanced snack. Um, And I do think it's good to tell kids too, you don't have to have a snack, right? If you're not hungry, and you feel like you can make it to dinner, you don't have to have a snack, right? We eat when, our, when we're hungry. We stop when we're satisfied or satiated. We just want to make sure that a child who skips a snack isn't, you know, too hungry before dinner. Or if they are, maybe they can munch on some veggies or something. But they shouldn't then say, well, I need a snack at 5 o'clock. Make sense? So number one is the time box. Number two is watch for sugar. Number three is to teach your kids that word satisfying or satiating and that and an appetite actually makes food taste better. And then number four is we do want to teach our kids about protein and fat, right? That protein and fat makes a satisfying snack that makes the food stick. So if they can choose snacks, if you can choose snacks together and gradually release the responsibility, the older the child, the more choices they have in their snacks, then if they can learn to make sure they add something with fat and protein to their snack, they're going to be more satisfied and yet still have time to build an appetite before dinner. It's great, right? So we want to look for Um, Like, for example, if you're going to have a handful of grapes, maybe you add a cheese stick. Okay. If you're going to have an apple, maybe you add nut butter or seed butter. Or similarly with toast, some cream cheese or some nut butter on top or just, you know, a heavy amount of butter. Um, If you're going to have yogurt, you could add you could add yogurt or lunch meat to all those crunchy snacks, right? All those crunchy snacks that are like classic American snack food, Cheez-Its, potato chips, goldfish, pretzels. A lot of those don't have a high satiating factor. And so we might need to throw in a little yogurt or we might need to add some lunch meat or a meat stick. Um, If you're having veggies, yay, that probably should be number six. If you're having veggies, that's awesome. But throw in a healthy dip, right? Because veggies aren't really going to stick to your ribs without some fat. Plus the fat helps assimilate the minerals and the vitamins. Um, So number one, make a system, create a time box so everyone knows what to expect. Number two, watch for sugar. I'm a believer. Number three, teach your kids how to find satisfying snacks which includes teaching them number four, what kinds of snacks have fat and have protein. And then my last one, of course, as a kid's cooking teacher, summer is a great time to teach kids to have a little more confidence and competence in the kitchen. So for me, number five is try new recipes. It's to, you know, allow your kids to look up some recipes, to dig through a cookbook or to search on Pinterest, or maybe you print out a couple and say, hey, which one do you want to try today? And give the kids a chance to learn how to make their own snack, right? For example, popsicles, pretty much all sugar, most popsicles, right? But if you make homemade popsicles with yogurt and collagen and whole fruits, now you've got fat, you've got protein, you've got fiber. You don't have to add any added sugar. Fruit is lovely sweet enough. You could add a bit of honey if you need to, right? But you could look up homemade popsicle recipes Oh my goodness, you could probably make a different one every single week all through the summer. And the kids will feel completely like they have mastered the art of making popsicles, right? Now, not I'm not saying make popsicles all summer. I'm saying be open to not only you trying new recipes, but your kids getting their hands involved and trying some new recipes to, to apply everything we've talked about. Uh, quick tip. I would not recommend making a recipe right at snack time because they're already hungry, right? So make a recipe maybe right after morning snack for afternoon snack. Does that make sense? That way everyone is, you know, satisfied. They're happy. They're a lot easier to work with in the kitchen if they've just been fed. It sounds counterintuitive, but it absolutely makes sense. 
I think especially when we think about summer, a lot of parents worry that their kids will spend too much time on screens. So we kick them outside, which is great. Kick them outside as often as possible. But also think about what are some other creative things they can do, right? Are they going to be cooking, working with their hands, being creative, tweaking people's recipes and making up their own? Are they going to be learning, you know, woodworking or knitting, crocheting, sewing? Like it doesn't have to be outdoor stuff. There are so many wonderful tasks, many of them life skills that will help serve the child later that kids can do with their hands and with the creative parts of their brain. What a wonderful opportunity we have, right? Wonderful opportunity as parents to give our children during the summer opportunities that they don't always have during the school year, right? When they're doing really kind of left-brained academic stuff, obviously reading and writing is more creative, but to be able to make things with their hands, get, get into gardening, right? Do some crafts, whatever, whatever fits your family, whatever fits your child. I advocate for cooking always. But I'm a strong, strong proponent of, of teaching our kids creativity, of giving them opportunities to work with their hands and, and to build both sides of their brain, right? Now, also, kids will impress all the adults around them. The more they can cook, it's super impressive. And, and we are here at Kids Cook Real Food to help you out this summer, okay? We know that kids will ask thousands of times, if it's snack time, what's for snack? Can I have a snack? And it gets a little crazy. So wouldn't it be amazing, wouldn't it be amazing for your summer if your kids knew when snack was, how to choose a healthy snack, how to prepare their own healthy snack such that the number of questions they ask about snacks is reduced by a lot. No promises that they'll never ask anything about snack. But if you can empower your kids to be independent at snack time, your summer is going to be so much more pleasant. I want your kids to be independent. I want them to feel like they can feed themselves and and manage snack and not have to ask you questions. They like that too, okay? Kids don't actually love depending on adults for everything. As much as they act like they do, they do love the feeling of being able to depend on themselves. That's a gift. That is a gift we can give them. And I just have to tell you um, about one family in our class, Kara's family, they made the homemade ranch dip that we teach. And, and is that an appetizer? Is it a salad? Is it a snack? Yes, of course. Yes, you can eat veggies and ranch for a snack. And they said things like this. That ranch dip was amazing. We're never buying store-bought ranch again. The kids said, we should double this recipe next time. And they loved it, okay? They asked for more. They asked for seconds on salad. And that's what I want for your family too, right? I want your kids excited about their food. I want them knowledgeable about how to prepare their food, and I want them eating their vegetables. And we can do that. We can do that together. So I hope that that you are ready to go into summer with these five tips, right? Creating a time box, um, watching for sugar, thinking about satisfying snacks with number four, fat and protein, and then being open to trying new recipes. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Healthy Parenting Handbook podcast. I hope your brain feels fed and your heart feels full and that you feel connected knowing that there are other parents on this journey with you. We're just trying to raise healthy, independent adults. And you know, the next time you think, man, there is no handbook for this job. Now there is the Healthy Parenting Handbook. Look up the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Please leave a review, my friends, as that helps other parents who need this information to find us. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That's a huge help. You can also look for our shorts as a reel on Instagram at Katie Kimball Kids Cook or subscribe to the Healthy Parenting Handbook Shorts channel on YouTube. You'll get those bite-sized portions of healthy parenting advice.